Thank you, Abraham, for the great introduction. And hello, everyone. Good morning. I hope you're enjoying the conference. I'd like to say a huge thank you to GoTo for having me today. It's really, really exciting to be here with you all. And one of the most exciting things about it is that I get to share with you all of the work that my colleagues and I are doing with Ecosia. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm currently working as a back-end developer at Ecosia since one year this month. It's my first job in tech. I'm a career changer. I've had two previous professional careers, the first as a camera assistant in the film and television industry, and the second as a speciality coffee roaster here in Berlin. In fact, I've actually been to go to twice before. Last year, I was here as a volunteer, and a couple of years previous, I was here making coffee just like my ex-colleagues are in the foyer today. So please go say hi to them and speak with them. Yeah, I see someone raising their coffee cup in the back. <laughs> it's good stuff. I would consider myself to be a self slash community talk developer. And it's being part of the communities such as Pi Ladies, Women Who Code, and Women Who Go that has really helped me get here today. Not only has it offered me a network to be able to find resources, but also to have support when times have been a little bit rough, but also to celebrate successes. And it was very important for me when I was getting into technology and making the change that I would be able to do it in a way that would have impact outside of the tech world. Having worked in coffee, an industry that is already seeing the effects of climate change, this was already on my mind. I took this picture in 2016 in Ethiopia. I was there for a coffee sourcing trip. And Ethiopia is actually where the coffee plant originates. 15 million Ethiopians depend on this crop as the back, uh, backbone of their economy. However, the spring and summer rains that the coffee plant relies on have been declining by 15 to 20 percent since the 1970s. And Ethiopia is predicted to, use th to lose 39 to 59% of their current growing areas by the end of the century. So when I came across Ecosia, it seemed like a perfect fit. In fact, some of the projects that we're working on are actually in the most beloved coffee growing areas of the world. So before we go any further, who in the audience today had already heard of Ecosia before the conference? Wow, okay, I would say looking out it's about 80%, which is amazing. Uh, and hopefully those of you who hadn't heard of it are now downloading the app and using it. Ecosia, or the search engine that plants trees, you may be surprised to hear has already been around for 10 years, meaning that it's one of the most mature businesses in this sector. It was found, and how it works is that, very similar to other search engine models, is that we generate revenue from adverts. And we're using this income to plant trees, opposed to maybe other more traditional companies that use this to give money out to investors. Founded in January 2009, it was created from the, uh, from the thought of Christian Kroll. Christian had been studying business administration in Germany, and he decided to take a world trip to find inspiration for creating a social business. During his travels, he was visiting Central America, and he came across projects that were um, supporting reforestation. And it was there that he decided that he wanted to create a project that would be able to support these projects further, and he came across the search engine model and felt it was the perfect fit. As Christian says here, Ecosia is a movement towards a better world, and we therefore believe that it belongs to everyone. Ecosia became a B Corporation in 2014, and this means that we're holding ourselves tight to criteria such as transparency, dependability, fairness, and sustainability. Last year, we became part of the Purpose Foundation. This means that the values that Christian set in place when he first set up Ecosia, one being that he would never take money out of Ecosia, and two being that he would never sell the company, are cemented and we are really proud to be leading a group of businesses who are trying to make a social impact. In January 2015, Ecosia users had planted one million trees. 
And by June of last year, 30 million trees have been planted by the revenue created by searches from our users. In February of this year, we had 50 million trees planted by Ecosia users. And today, we have over 70 million. So you can really see that this is picking up speed. Consumers and users are more interested in the, in the impact that online activity are having, and they're actively looking for ways to be able to do some good with their online activities. We have over 8 million users, and we are becoming very quickly one of the largest climate movements in the world today. And for me, this quote from one of our users, Kimberly, really sums up what is so beautiful about Ecosia, because it takes something so simple and everyday as a search, and it uses that to have an impact on the world around it. But you might be asking, why trees? And I want to talk to you a little bit about the projects that we're supporting and why at the core of the company's values it's around reforestation. Hopefully, because you came to a talk in a track called Saving the World, it's not a huge shock to hear that our climate is changing. And this is starting to happen a lot closer to home with regular droughts, flooding, and natural disasters happening at an alarming rate. However, we need to remember for a lot of people, particularly those living in the global south, this is not a new reality. Luckily, nature has provided us with an absolute perfect solution to this. As Professor Tom Krauss says, forest rest restoration isn't just one of our climate change solutions. It is overwhelmingly more powerful than all of the other climate change solutions proposed. And this is why we believe reforestation is what we should be putting our energy and focus on. We're currently working with 26 projects in over 16 countries. And when we're looking for projects to choose, for us, it is really about the history of monitoring the projects that we've been working with, of talking to local experts, and understanding the unique needs for each region. We're also choosing to focus on biodiversity hotspots. These are areas around the planet that uh, support half of the world's plant species and nearly 43% of animal species that are found nowhere else on Earth. This means that the impact of reforestation is huge, and that actually supports the rest of the world and helps us all. By focusing on these areas, we can really have the most impact with our reforestation. For example, Burkina Faso in northwest Africa is very much vulnerable to climate change. The desert is spreading there, and, and we've been working with them since 2014 with our partners, Homza Ter. The trees that are being planted there are meaning that the land is being able to be made fertile again, creating shade for other crops, and allowing the communities to be able to use the land again for a nutritional value as well as being able to earn an income. Whole communities, whole villages are coming together to work on this, to plant trees, and to bring back the once degraded land back to fertile green pastures. And with that, I would like to play you a short video from our partner, Homsa Ter, uh, introduced by Sadhu, our friend and co-worker. Un arbre, ça veut dire déjà changer le paysage, transformer le zéro, Uh -uh. Nous sommes dans un pays sahélien où il pleut peu, où la désertification est galopante et grandissante. Et donc les conditions d'exploitation de la terre deviennent très faibles, ce qui fait que les populations de plus en plus, surtout les jeunes, sont obligées d'aller ailleurs. Planter des arbres au Sahel, ce n'est pas quelque chose de facile. C'est même très difficile. Et surtout, euh, organiser tout ça, planifier, coordonner, diriger, 
et exécuter, ce n'est pas du tout facile. Mais on a toujours de l'énergie parce qu'on a foi en ce que nous faisons. Au nom de toute notre équipe, au nom de tous les villageois, nous voulons dire merci à tous les utilisateurs de Kouzia pour la confiance qu'ils ont placée à nous et nous ferons tout pour élever le défi pour que les recherches permettent de planter des arbres qui ont une valeur ajoutée énorme pour l'environnement en général, mais aussi pour les communautés villageoises du Burkina Faso. And as Sadhu mentioned in the video, it's not only about regenerating the soil and the impact on the environment, it's also about supporting communities and allowing them to be able to take control of their own futures. We've noticed in many of our projects, including Burkina Faso, that it also has a very good impact for women in these communities. In Burkina Faso, women are indispensable. They are, creating, they are collecting water and food for their communities but they have very little say in the decision-making. Now that they're able to plant trees and make more income, they're actually having the chance to be able to join the discussion and make more decisions for their communities. We've also seen this in Ghana, where women have come together to plant and harvest the baobab tree fruit. Previously, they had been doing this alone, and it had been difficult. If they had had to take a day off for illness or maybe to look after their children, then the fruit may spoil, meaning that they were unable to reap the full harvest of their crops. Now, by working together, they are able to increase their income and collect savings. As well as creating a sense of community, this is also allowing them to finally have more uh, income and be able to support their families, which is very important to them. So in Ethiopia, as I spoke about before, a country that I'm very fond of, that I really love the coffee from, and in the middle here with her goat is Almas and her family. Almas is a coffee farmer in Ethiopia, and she has been planting trees that have been funded by Akoja users to create shade, and she's already seen the benefit of this for her coffee crop, being able to yield much more create more coffee to take to market and be able to earn more of an income. Like other women in her village, she is now able to have savings and send her children to school. Or in Brazil, where Anna and Flavia are running an all-women uh, tree planting project. Not that it doesn't come with its difficulties. Most of the men in Brazil are, uh, sorry, most of the landowners in Brazil are men. And, uh, <laughs> And um, it's a little bit difficult for them because there is a lot of machinism and they're not particularly keen of hearing from a woman how to use machinery or how to plant trees. And they're actually managing to get around with this by speaking to the landowners' wives and trying to explain to them what they're trying to do and that it's beneficial for everybody. Dysrekia is from Indonesia. She is based in uh, Borneo and she is one of a group of uh, indigenous people that have put together the Gongnu Lester Foundation. They're working to support local farmers to be able to make sustainable crops so they can uh, profit off their land. Previously to this, economic problems have meant that many people there have been forced to sell their land to palm oil plantations. And this is what they want to fight against. I think they say a picture paints a thousand words. And this is a picture of the uh, destruction that's called, caused by palm oil uh, plantations. Big tracts of forest are being burnt down to make way for these plantations. And in 2016, over two million hectares of Indonesian forest land were burnt, and it's continuing. By supporting projects such as uh, the one ran, or the one that Dysrexia is part of, we're being able to create a sustainable economy for the local people that live there, so they're no longer forced to sell their land to palm oil plantations. And these trees are creating not only employment, but also giving uh, opportunity for poor people there to take back control of their land and be able to feed themselves and their family from it. 
As Jane Goodall reminds us, to reconnect with nature is key if we want to save the planet. And this is something that we're noticing throughout many of our projects. We're working with the Jane Goodall Foundation in Uganda to help plant trees that create forest corridors between existing patches of forests. This means that chimpanzees and other primates are no longer wandering into agricultural land and facing conflict with the communities that are living there. One of the people that we met while visiting our reforestation project in Uganda was Moses. He'd been previously producing charcoal until he realized how badly it was damaging the environment around him, the problems it was causing for the wildlife, and that it was actually doing a disservice to his own community. He now works running a nursery that helps grow these forest corridors, and he's also involving the whole community. Many people are joining him on their weekends or their days off, including school children, so they can educate themselves and also be part of the tree planting process. Hopefully you can see that transparency is a really core value for Ecosia. And we expect it from our partners as much as we expect it from ourselves. All of our users are able to read about our projects on our blog, watch our regular tree updates on our YouTube channel, and we're regularly posting unfiltered contents from the projects on our social media platforms. We're also publishing financial reports monthly. These give you a full breakdown of the revenue that is being made from our users' searches and how much of that is going into tree planting. Of course, we do have to take off the taxes and salaries and rent. But after that, we have around 50 to 60% of our total revenue left. And that is going into either a project directly or into our tree planting fund, which is a buffer to ensure that we can always pay our projects, even if our income is fluctuating. It's very important to us that we stick within this percentile of our total revenue. And that's why we are very, running a very lean operation and looking for ways to have most impact with as little cost as possible. The financial reports also highlight which projects have been funded each month and how many trees have been planted. I'm showing you August because they do take a little time to prepare, but you can find all of them going back quite a number of years on our website. Users can see their own individual impact in the top right corner of our website. This small counter in, um, gives them an impression of the impact that their online activity is having. And this is something that we're looking to expand upon and to be able to give more information so individuals are able to make more informed choices but also see clearly what impact they're having. Okay, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about our users, as I've mentioned them maybe several times. 50% of our users are under the age of 35. And we're really seeing this growth of younger generations who are interested in the climate and kind of trying to make an impact through their activities, either online or offline. In fact, university students in the UK, Germany, and uh, France have been advocating to make Ecosia the default search engine for their universities. Fred, who you can see in the, let me try to use this. Fred, who you can see in the middle of this picture, uh, was one of the first students who was successful with his campaign at the University of Sussex. Since then, since graduating, he's joined us as an intern and recently got uh, his full-time contract to work at Ecosia and be able to help other students in setting up these kind of campaigns at their universities. With movements like Friday for Future and Extinction Rebellion on the streets, it is very clear to us that people are taking more attention and taking an interest in what is going on in the environment. And that's why we feel like we're seeing this reflected in the growth of users. For example, the Amazon fires in Brazil earlier this year 
were widely uh, mentioned in the media, and it led to a lot of people asking, what can I do? In fact, we saw, a user, we saw our user base triple from last year after this event, which is both a blessing and not such a blessing. And while connecting users to tree planting projects is very important, we also want to support our users in making more informed, more sustainable choices online. This year, we introduced the Green Leaf. It's a search feature that highlights companies that have been certified as practicing sustainably. This is not a paid ad, and we don't earn revenue from it. It's simply there so that our users are able to see and make a choice on the companies they decide to buy from or work with. Similarly, we also introduced the fossil fuel icon. And this is currently highlighting businesses that are somehow connected to the coal industry. 2019 data is showing that the time for patient engagement with the coal industry has definitely run out. And that is why we feel it's very important to highlight companies that are continuing to support coal mining, whether it be through finding new locations, building machinery, or doing the mining themselves. We're also recognizing that travel is a really important part of modern lifestyles, and that's why we've introduced Ecosia Travel. At the moment, it works that when you search for a hotel and you book through one of our partners, we will earn revenue, which we can then put into planting trees. But we're looking to expand this and to be able to offer our users more choices to make their next journey a green one. And users who are interested in climate are predominantly also interested in privacy. While it would be beneficial for us, I was talking to our marketing team yesterday about this, it would be very useful for us to be able to track a lot more of what our users do. We'd be able to make our service better and we would be able to generate more revenue. But it is at our core belief that we should not be tracking users online. And that's why we have a very strict privacy policy and it's been a very active, conscious choice to not in include lots of tracking on our site. In fact, you can turn off all of the tracking should you want to. So I've spoken a lot about how we're supporting users to make green choices, but I also want to talk to you about how we as a company are trying to lead by example and make our operations green as well. You might be interested to know that the average search emits 0.2 grams of carbon dioxide into the air. That's not true with Ecosia. We've been planting uh, solar panel plants, or not planting, sorry, we've been building solar panel plants, <laughs> wrong verb, <laughs> to offset our energy uses. And we find that this is better than paying for the offsetting because if we have excess energy, we're able to put it back into the grid, which is pushing out dirty energy. And while carbon neutral is pretty good, we didn't want to stop there. That's why this year we became the first company to be producing twice as much renewable energy as we're actually using, which means that we are actually carbon negative and that using Ecosia as a search engine means that you're using a carbon negative search engine. Yeah, right? It's pretty exciting. <laughs> and in, Really important. It means that if you make a search with us, that you're actually um, reducing emissions. And I think that as a tech industry, we really need to take this on board because the servers that host the web need a huge amount of power. If the internet was a country, it would rank number three in emissions. So we can't no longer ignore this fact. We need to make sure that what we're running our services on is based on renewable energy. If Ecosia was the size of Google, and through planting trees and using renewable energy, we'd actually be able to offset 15% of the world emissions. That's equal to all of the vehicle emissions worldwide. It's a huge impact, but we can't do it alone. 
but also looking closer to home, to where we can support. And recently, or this year, we got involved in the Hamback Forest demonstrations. If you're not familiar with the Hamback Forest, it's a large stretch of woodland in Germany that has, since the 1970s, been destroyed by the energy provider RWE for coal mining. Only 10% of it remains. We offered uh, the energy provider RWE 1 million euros to buy that remaining section of the forest. And while they did actually decline our offer, the visibility that this and also the demonstrations created has meant that they have reduced the extraction in the area for now. We also decided to get involved with uh, Richard Perkins, who's a YouTuber and a permaculturist, and created a regenerative agriculture competition. These are the two winners from France, and they have been awarded 50,000 euros to kickstart their permaculture farm. And we're hoping by supporting these kind of initiatives, we can also show that while most of our projects are in the global south, there is a lot of work that can be done in Europe as well. It's also very important when you work, I think, at a company uh, that is outwardly projecting all of this information about sustainable choices, that as an employee, you also have the opportunity to engage with that. Working in the tech industry means that we do not always need to be in the same place as each other, which is a huge benefit. It means that we can take remote time and we can also work while traveling. For example, I recently went to visit my family in the UK and instead of flying, which is what I've been doing, I guess, for years, I decided that I would take the train. I could afford to do this because I didn't have to take any uh, extra holiday for that because I can work from the train. And I will also say, as you can see in this picture, on the Eurostar, you get a really nice breakfast. So it's a huge <laughs> plus. You don't normally get it on your EasyJet or Ryanair flight. We also have the opportunity to visit the tree planting projects. Uh, and although I have not been to one yet, I'm really looking forward to doing this next year. This means that we get to connect with the projects themselves and see the work that's being doing on the ground. But it's also more than that. Ecosia itself is actually a fairly small company. Uh, we have around 40 to 50 employees in Berlin. But we're actually supporting many, many more people because we're also supporting the wages of the people in our tree planting projects and they are as much colleagues of ours as we are of them. Those of us that are in Berlin come together every Wednesday for a communal breakfast. And we also take this opportunity to invite guests to come and talk to us, such as our tree planting uh, officer, Peter, who comes and tells us wonderful uh, stories and information about the work that's going on at the various projects. Or recently, we had Tony Ronaldo from the Australian World Vision Project talking to us about how he's working in Africa to reclaim the far parts of the desert. This year, we also introduced our climate, policy, uh, climate leave policy. As many of our users are out on the streets demonstrating, we felt it was only right that our colleagues were able to do the same. So we have made this new policy, which means if one of us wants to go to a climate demonstration, we may do so during work hours without taking any annual leave. This means that we can really support those of us in the company who want to and feel comfortable in joining in climate activism actions. And we're also offering legal support to them uh, should they need it. This is a photograph from just outside of Berlin in Madlitz, Brandenburg. We've rented a part of land and working with permaculture experts and local farmers, we're gonna build a forest, uh, far, uh, forest garden hopefully showcasing exactly what a forest garden can do, but also creating a space for us um, that work in the office to be able to go and get involved, experiment, and also help plant there, which I can tell you as someone who is only just adjusting to office work and sitting at a desk for eight hours is a very welcome change. So, to conclude, Hopefully, I have shown you some of the ways that Ecosia is making an effort 
to not only offer a sustainable service, but act responsible as a company. It is only one way that we as a tech industry can do it. And I hope that this has somewhat inspired you to go back to your own businesses or your own places of employment and talk to them maybe about what energy is being used or if you could uh, implement some of the things that we're having at Ecosia. We also recognize that we can't do this alone. And we are constantly looking for partners who may have innovative project ideas or I don't know, maybe you're sat in the audience and you've had an idea or something, way that we can work together to give our users a more sustainable, greener experience. Please come speak to us. We do have a booth outside down in the foyer. And with that, I would like to say thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>